I like my job because when you go home, you know you made a difference. Because it's just, it's just happy. It's nice knowing it's a very rewarding job. Very rewarding when you've helped. It could be like the tiniest thing that you've helped someone with, but it's like massive to them. Just generally making that difference. Because like I say, some people don't see anybody, or they've got a son that lives 40 miles away that comes on a Wednesday. You know, and that's that's all all they see in general. And it's just nice that you made a bit of a difference to them. You know, conversation, chat. They are brilliant. Richard, the care there, and Leah, the care there. They are absolutely brilliant. I can't fault them. It can be a very stressful job, but on the other hand, you get more rewards out of it than you do stressfulness. And it's nice going to service you and the smile at you. That's that you made the day. If you walk in and they smile at you, you know you've done something right. I actually did something completely different before, but because um, I, I looked after my grandma a lot, so it like it forced me to go in and help other people. So I thought if I could do it for my grandma, I'd do it for everyone else. And best job I've had so far, to be honest. <laughs> Come in and I might be feeling a bit low, and Richard would say, Good morning, Doris. And I'd say, Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Leah. And I might be feeling a bit low, and then all of a sudden, them just saying them words, good morning, and how are you today? And they cheer me up really, really lovely. It's like a lot of people, I think, oh God, Karen, I couldn't do that. But community is so much different. Like, some people will just go and see you to have a chat with them because they're lonely and they just want to see someone through the day. It's not all, like, just all physical work. Sometimes it's social and interacting with them. It is quite flexible. I mean, I don't have to dedicate, if I wanted to dedicate my life to it, you can, but you don't always have to as well. Sometimes I feel like I could put my arms around them and cuddle them because they're that good. And anybody that says they ain't, come and see me, I tell you.
officially two o'clock and we're starting the Health and Wellbeing Board at the 23rd of March uh, 2022. It's our first unique attempt at a hybrid meeting. So the first part of it will be here in the uh, chamber and then at approximately 2.25, 2.30 we will move through to the assembly rooms and that's where the workshop element of it will begin. I'm going to say, Stuart, can you let me know when you've started the live stream? So we've got the thumbs up there so we can welcome people from Nottingham, England and from round the world who are tuning in to see the health and wellbeing strategy of Nottinghamshire this afternoon. Our particular dignitary is full screen Cassie McLean, uh, who is the independent chair of no less than Nottingham and Nottinghamshire ICS. You're very welcome this afternoon, Cathy. You're big and bold as the only person on the screen, so you have pride of place this afternoon, Cathy. Feel free to interrupt us at any stage. Thank you, Cathy. First of all, we'll go into the minutes of the last meeting held on the 9th of February 2022, pages 3 to 10. If anybody has any corrections they would make around the accuracy of the minutes as opposed to contributing to the discussion on them, you're more than welcome to make that three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Anybody got anything to contribute around the accuracy of the minutes? No. I'm going to go over uh, for apologies for absence, Martin. Thank you very much, Chairman. So the apologies I have today are from Councillor David Walters from Ashfield District Council, Councillor Henry Wheeler from Gething Borough Council, Dr. Dr. Jeremy Griffiths from the CCG, David Ainsworth from the CCG, and Idris Griffiths from Bassett Law CCG, who has Dr. Victoria McGregor Riley deputising for him. Okay. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number three, which is the declaration of interests by members, either pecuniary or non-pecuniary or private interest in any of the items for discussion this afternoon. You can mention it now or at any stage throughout the afternoon. If it comes into your head that might be a disclosable interest, feel free to just disclose it and we'll deal with it at the time. Item agenda number four. We've only got two item agendas this afternoon. It's the joint health and wellbeing strategy and after that the work program. And then as I said, we go through to the assembly rooms. So we're moving on to item number four, which is the Nottinghamshire Joint Health and Wellbeing Strategy 2022 to 2026. And the purpose of this report this afternoon is to secure the endorsement of this strategy and support for the executive and full-length summaries uh, from uh, uh, the board this afternoon. Now, many of you will have seen the wonderful colour version of the strategy, which we have published a small number of them. Those of you who are more enthusiastic will have seen the executive summary, and some of you may even have read the executive summary. And those of you who know no boundaries in terms of the amount of things that you will read will have seen the full summary. So we have, I suppose, daddy bear, mummy bear and baby bear. So take your pick. We'll get through them all this afternoon. This is, for me, the third health and wellbeing strategy that I've been involved in. Uh, it started back in 2012 when the then uh, Secretary of State for Health, Sir Andrew Lansley, introduced the Health and Social Care Bill and he first created health and wellbeing boards, which this is. Those boards have evolved over the last 10 years and this is our third strategy. It's the one I have to be honest that I'm most excited about because it falls into place with the other great changes uh, which Cathy is representing this afternoon, which is the development of the Integrated Care Service, the ICP Integrated Care Partnerships and the ICP Integrated Care Boards, plus 
uh, uh, the primary care networks and place-based partnerships. We'll go into a lot of that this afternoon because quite often it just looks like a series of letters and things that don't mean anything to anybody. But by the end of the workshop, you'll all be experts in it. The uh, health and wellbeing uh, strategy uh, is presented against the background of a fall in healthy life expectancy for the first time in a hundred years. Over the last hundred years consecutively, we've all actually gained uh, a year in life expectancy every four years or something like 30 minutes every day. So we've been consistently living longer, but that has now stalled for a variety of reasons, including COVID. So it's against the background of that uh, that we're, we're looking at things today, reduced healthy life expectancy uh, and life expectancy. Through the document you'll have a continuous uh, uh, reference to the things that make us healthy, the places that make us healthy, the environment that make us healthy, and that brings you back to papers by people such as Dahlgren and Whitehead back in the 1970s through to uh, um, Professor Sir Michael Marmot in 2000, Fair Society, Healthy Lives, where they over the last 20 plus years have realised that we are not just people who get sick and go to the doctor and use the NHS, but we are a product of the places we live the jobs we've got and the people that are around us, the infrastructure and the houses and education and all of those things. So we are products of the environments in which we live. Part of this we'll be looking at Nottinghamshire and Nottingham and one of the most uh, uh, um, spoken about discrepancies being the inequality between people living in Rushcliffe who can live seven years longer than people who live in Ashfield uh, and Mansfield and places like that and not only do they live seven years longer but the very people in these areas actually live a healthier life. So people in the poorest areas get ill and live in illness 14 years before people in the best areas. Quite remarkable in the place that we live today that those discrepancies can be so uh, huge when you look at them. Uh, in terms of that, we have decided that there are four ambitions that we'd like to achieve, giving every child the best start in life, creating the healthy and sustainable places that can bring about those changes, and giving everybody improvements and support to get the right health and to keep healthy uh, societies uh, healthy and well. We've picked out nine different areas that we wish to concentrate on and they're nicely elucidated in the paper. Uh, we've identified those uh, areas through quite a considerable period of consultation. We spent the last three months going out talking to people, doing online surveys, the most comprehensive survey of any health and wellbeing scrutiny to date, and we've brought all those back before you previously and delivered them into the strategy that you see before you today. Uh, so we're going to not only look for help and support in the endorsement, but also to uh, elucidate how we will monitor and keep track of the progress over the next four years. This is largely going to be an online strategy which will evolve in a way over the four years as opposed to a static document. Uh, it is, as I said, the most uh, exciting opportunity that we've had in a long time to change the health and well-being of the people of Nottinghamshire uh, and I'm enthusiastic and would wish to share that enthusiasm with you and with that I'll pass over to Sue and Jonathan and ask for their contributions. Thank you Chair and good afternoon everyone. Um, I will just add three things really quickly to what the Chair has already covered for us. Um, uh, first of all, let me just say um, uh, uh, something about dovetailing. So the, the joint health and well-being strategy that all of you have contributed to um, dovetails very much with the work of the integrated care system and in particular, uh, amongst other things, the, the health inequalities strategy. And so I'm really pleased that, um, Cathy, you've been able to join us this afternoon just to underline that. Uh, the second thing I really wanted to say, picking up something that John has already touched on, and that's the 
opportunity that I think we have. Um, uh, coming out of one phase of COVID pandemic, um, finding ourselves in the spring perhaps with some fresh energy now to finally give some attention to some of the things which have under uh, under light some of the um, some of the effects and impacts that we've seen of COVID over the last few years, in particular um, around inequalities. Um, so we've got an opportunity that arises as we move into recovery. We've got uh, an opportunity, I think, which arises because um, right across Nottinghamshire and the country, I think people have um, a much sharper focus on the role which inequity and unfairness plays in our society, I think that gives us a fresh opportunity to give some renewed attention to addressing that within the work of the Health and Wellbeing Board. And I think the other thing which um, provides us a fresh opportunity is some of the restructuring and transformation that's going on in the system around us. Uh, and which uh, a number of you represent, particularly those of you working more closely within the, um, the local NHS, the work of place-based partnerships in particular. So I think all of these things come together, uh, present us with a fresh opportunity. I'm really looking forward to this afternoon and particularly the workshop where we can do some more work together on, on securing for ourselves some of those opportunities and thinking about how we're going to work together to deliver this and how we're going to hold one another to account in a really constructive way uh, to make sure that we deliver some of these outcomes for our, our residents. I think that's probably um, enough from me, John, in view of what you've covered already. But Sue and I, between us, be happy to, to take any questions there might be. Fantastic. Um, obviously, this is a statutory obligation. We have to produce this strategy. Um, I'm going to throw it open because uh, there's uh, something in this for everybody. Every single one of us through COVID has realised that the most important thing that exists in our lives are family, friends and people close to us when we've been isolated from them, when they've died alone, when the people have given birth alone, when the sheer challenge, the basics become important and people look back to what is it that makes us happy and healthy as people and societies. Uh, and I think there's something in this for all of us. And there isn't a single person who hasn't got a vested interest in making this work. Uh, and against that, I throw it open and say, if you've got a question, chuck it out. If there are no questions, I shall go round the room independently. So, oh, hang on, hang on, Cathy. You, you, you haven't got a voice, you've only got a finger, so I, I wasn't able to. But it's, it's, it's something I might sort of continue with, Cathy. It's a, a thought. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, Cathy. Well, thank you very much and um, lovely to be here with you. And uh, apologies, I can't be uh, with you in, in the room, but um, good to be able to, to hear all of that. Um, first of all, can I say, you know, I've... I've I have read and you know, I'm in your third category of uh, obsessives who've read all of it. So <laughs> uh, thanks, John. Um, I was delighted to see this um, and Jonathan and uh, and Sue, uh, from my perspective, this absolutely, as you say, dovetails with the things that we've been discussing at the integrated care system. And I, I can see how this, as we move forward with the new arrangements, how this will be a, a tremendous uh, to get going with our integrated care strategy, which, which the integrated care partnership will need to create uh, to later in the year. Uh, and this this fulfills, you know, all of those things that I would expect to see in it. I'm delighted to see, you know, the focus on on children and, and so on. So I'm, uh, you know, for, for what I know, it's a statutory thing you've got to do, but I'm fully supportive of this and I can see how this will work work really well to um, align. And, and the question will be what we all then do to ensure delivery, because it'll only come alive when we actually make those changes that you have highlighted. So thank you, John. One of two strategies that you have to keep in, in your head, 
uh, uh, including the City of Nottingham strategy, and uh, it will be surprising just how big an overlap there will be between the two uh, strategies and how through the ICS and the ICP, the two strategies in many instances will become one strategy for the bigger challenges that exist between us uh, as, as, as boundaries uh, don't exist for uh, air pollution and, and, and big issues such as that. Uh, thank you, Cassie. Nigel. Just looking at the four strategic ambitions and um, children have just been mentioned. And I, the last two years must have had a, a massive impact on youngsters, when I, very young young children. Um, no, how you know it certainly impacted the pandemic. Was certainly impacted on their on their development, um, particularly younger children, where they you know they've been locked, locked in lockdown for two years and so on. Um, it's got to have a massive impact on the, on the mental health and, and their development. It's something that I think uh, we should we should certainly look at. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. I don't think that there's any doubt that children who have been reasonably confined to their own homes uh, have struggled to be school ready to be uh, going to school in a manner in which we would like him in terms of being receptive, being uh, uh, able to, to, to learn without requiring more input. Uh, I've never seen so many children with mental health in my day-to-day -day activities than I have. I've never seen so many children who are refusing to go to school, who are staying up in their bedrooms, where parents are struggling with extraordinary pressures. There is nothing more difficult than seeing a parent who wants to bring their child to school and the child won't go. The sheer frustration is incredible. Childhood mental health and mental health in general has come up time and time again in every single workshop that we do. Um, and clearly giving a child the best start in life, uh, as Professor Sir Michael Marmot said, if you give them a good environment, if you give them a good education, if they're able to come out with good marks, if they're able to get a good job, if they're then able to get a good house, if they're then able to create their own environment, that is how you create a, a healthy, fair society. And of course it all starts with that childhood experience and it may take some time to reverse what COVID did if indeed it's possible for all kids but you're absolutely right that challenge is front and foremost uh, in our strategies going forward. Uh, Jonathan? I will just say um, again um, just a couple of things to uh, uh, John's comments um, so just to uh, to underline yes absolutely the importance of early years in any context but yeah noting the the impact that COVID-19 has had on on the, the emotional health and well-being of, of young people for sure. Um, <clears throat> we're undertaking some work um, again with the support of partners um, around uh, assessing the impact of COVID-19 on a number of different groups within the population and that's one of the one of the things we will be focusing on. Um, colleagues will perhaps also be interested to refer back to the joint strategic needs assessment and we've been able to do some work um, in the last year or so around, um, again, around the emotional health and well-being of children and young people. <clears throat> and, uh, and that's really just an opportunity for me to underline the importance of the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment and its recommendations in shaping um, the agenda and the work of partners um, right across the, the local system. And then finally, something really specific just to add, <clears throat> um, uh, a multi-agency group of um, uh, local NHS, um, city county council um, colleagues met uh, yesterday and we did agree some joint funding for a post uh, uh, which we intend should be uh, permanent um, to oversee some of that work right across the system so it is something which partners represented here today are, are very much focused on thank you thanks very much uh, councillor david martin yeah, thank you, John. Um, <coughs> welcome, Catherine, the chair of the ICS. I feel I've been watching this programme going on for about seven years now as a member of the Adult Health and Social Care and Health Scrutiny Committees. It's been like watching an embroidered pattern come together. 
evolving as it went along. And it's been interesting for me because I'm a member of uh, for Ashfield, which has high deprivation indices, and I feel like I've been sitting watching those indices never never decrease for the last seven years. And it's a very, very well-written plan. It's a very well-thought-out plan. I like the clarity of it. The layout is very good, and I think the designers should be commended on the, on the layout. It's very good. It's very easy to read. And I hope we stick to the... Um, the, the uh, strategic implementation framework because where it lists the current system and the place-based health that's a really good all of that in there is really good you know and I, I'm hoping you're going to be like our Jean-Luc Picard always going forward because we can't find reverse um, you know so I'm, I'm and of course bringing the ICS on online at this time is, is an appropriate moment to have a clear strategy so I commend all the officers who've worked on it it's a really good strategy and I'm hoping now that going forwards we can make a real impact on people's lives, especially after the pandemic. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. It's nice to be compared to the Star Trek Enterprise, going out and finding new worlds and developing uh, new new areas. Uh, you are uh, right that you live in, 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 in the epicentre of the challenge of health inequality in Ashfield. Uh, and it's in all the years, nothing has changed in terms of the fact that the life uh, difference between Rushcliffe and Ashfield of seven years, 50% of it, three and a half years, is down to smoking. Just stopping smoking would eliminate half the inequalities overnight. Obesity, diet, making up another 10, 20% of that. So none of these are things that are outside of our abilities to influence and part of our new uh, sustainable uh, food strategy involves tackling that and front and foremost are, as you'll see throughout, tobacco, alcohol, etc., within the nine uh, ambitions which are deliverable uh, and we will obviously be doubling down on the very, very most important areas where we can make change and bring about uh, improvements in those health inequalities and you'll be living in the middle of it councillor martin you'll be able to feed back to us thank you um melanie brooks thank you chair so um certainly as a board i think we'd want to feel assured about the level of public um, engagement in the strategy so i'm really pleased to see that in the yellow pages and particularly um, noting the public interest, um, both you know from children, and young people, and adults in mental health. So I hope. I mean, I'm not going to ask now what we're going to do to sustain that kind of engagement because I'm assuming, Chair, that we're going to tackle that in the workshop part of the session. But I think I'll be really keen as a board member to see that we see that that level of engagement continue through the implementation and particularly reflecting the priorities that are important to people. Because, like you say, there are there are significant inequalities, and mental health is. One of those, not just in the way that people experience that, but people with inequalities are more likely to experience poor mental health yes. and poor mental in itself drives further inequalities. So I think that's quite important to capture that. So like I say, Chair, I'm assuming that we'll be capturing the ongoing engagement of, of um, our residents in our implementation in the second half. Jonathan, Sue, did you want to add to that? Yes, we'll be dealing with that later on. And if for some reason um, it, uh, it uh, doesn't, secure quite the prominence that it should. I, I know that your prompt is on it. Thank you. Sharon, from the Police and Crime Office. Just to comment, thank you, Chair. So I think there are, um, it's a great strategy and echo comments that have been made previously, really well put together. Um, really well structured and so on. I suppose just from our office, um, I think it's just important that, you know, I reiterate um, there are some significant synergies between the health and wellbeing strategy and the police and crime plan. Um, I know some of your, your behavioural risk factors, for instance, that have been identified around child sexual abuse um, um, and, and certainly intimate partner violence as well are things that were deeply concerned with and, and we commission quite a lot of services and, and support around as well. Um, so I suppose it's, it's just kind of 
just re-emphasise that, you know, we, we have a vested interest in this, you know, Dr Doddy is right, it's everybody's business, but, you know, there, there are deeper synergies still to exploit um, in terms of making use for us and, and then realising those benefits that achieve well-being, but actually also for us achieve, you know, people feeling safer, um, you know, and, and, and women and, and girls being um, being supported appropriately as well. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, and obviously, domestic abuse is one of the the, 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 the nine areas of ambition uh, to to respond to and help survivors to rebuild their lives, etc. Uh, Jonathan, Sue, have you anything to add to that? Well, I, um, absolutely. Um, we note that and um, and and welcome um, the amount of skin that you have in the game too. Um, and I'm really pleased that uh, I'll be meeting up with Commissioner Henry, I think, in the next week or so to explore how we can build on some of that, um, uh, particularly around um, substance misuse agenda. But of course, you're right also to note the, the common interest we have around domestic violence as well. Thank you. Susan Shaw. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I also want to um, endorse what people have said about the strategy, and it's really going to be interesting to see uh, as we move through for the rest of the afternoon. And I think uh, it, it, it's really good uh, that children are up there, because uh, if we can get the children, every child, to see, uh, to look at every child across Tottinghamshire, it'd be absolutely amazing. Um, uh, added to uh, what we've already got here, and it's it's a it's a huge uh, piece of work, and we all need to work together. But added to that, we've now seen with the energy crisis and the uh, prevalence of use of food banks and more children going into um, poverty, it, it never stands still, and it just gets worse and worse in terms of what we've got to do to even stand still around these young people, children, and young people. So, I think uh, within what we already know and constantly things are happening which impact even further on children and people um it's about getting going really quickly and making some changes for young people so i applaud it thank you uh, thank you susan and part of the afternoon will be how we not only gain support for the strategy uh work together in its implementation but also how we monitor it going forward bearing in mind what you said uh ladies and gentlemen oh, uh, councillor place can I just say about good food and nutrition? I've been visiting youth clubs during the time they've been reopened and they've been showing children how to make different meals. They've seen food they've never seen before. They've all tried different vegetables. And I think it's been really good because, like I say, a lot of children have never even seen butter sprouts. <laughs> you know, they might know carrots and peas. Yes. But they've not seen cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, all things like that. And they've joined in and out to make a meal and all sat down to eat it together, which I think were really, really good. And I, I applaud them for going out and fetching food in to do it. So. And many inner city kids have never even seen a cow, Sheila. So never mind, know where the milk comes from. They haven't even seen the cow. Uh, so you're, you're absolutely right. We have things in Nottinghamshire such as the uh, Childhood Trailblazers Obesity Project, which goes directly into the community, which educates parents and children around food. We have subsidised uh, healthy uh, meals uh, for people in certain brackets, uh, and it's a, a big part of our healthy food strategy for Nottinghamshire going forward as well as having a food champion for Nottinghamshire to uh, do exactly what you say is to educate people on healthy food etc. Uh, Jonathan, Sue, anything to say on? Fantastic. As we get towards 2.30 um, I'm going to uh, move the recommendation uh, that uh, we um, endorsed the Nottinghamshire Joint Health and Wellbeing Strategy 2022 to 2026 and support in principle the executive summary which is the smaller version 
and the full strategic document which only Cathy McLean has admitted to reading uh, and uh, agree to provide further input in the workshop which we are going to. Can we have that seconded please? Seconded. All those in favour? Excellent. Thank you. So we're going to move on to the work programme uh, briefly uh, and I'm just going to present the work programme as it exists. Uh, today is our hybrid meeting of the 23rd, which is in, in, in the yellow page, and our next meeting uh, will be on Wednesday the 4th of May at 2 p.m. 2022, uh, when we update the membership, importantly, in view of the changing circumstances of the Health and Wellbeing Board and how we restructure in order to be able to implement the ICS, the ICP, the ICB, uh, place-based partnerships, the primary care networks and the County Council to help in the uh, delivery uh, of what we're about to deal with this afternoon. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I would bring this part of the meeting to a close uh, and I'll see you all in uh, the assembly rooms in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Cathy. We'll leave you on that screen for a couple of hours. We'll be back in a couple of hours, Cathy. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, Joe. Don't go anywhere. Uh